Rafe Hadel Manku, you were here with us all through as uh, the nights when the, the crowds were queuing outside here to go and see the Queen's coffin, uh, and you're a royal expert, and you've noticed something about the King's speech that nobody else has commented on. Rafe, tell us what it is. Yes, so I thought the King gave an excellent speech, and for me, the Nadia, the low point came at the very beginning and the very end when we had a mixed-sex choir at St George's Chapel, Windsor, singing the national anthem and uh, the, the carol at the end. Now, why does that matter? Well, it's the first time in the 670-year history of St George's, Windsor, that you've had a mixed-sex choir. An English all-male choral tradition is part of our gift to world civilization, if I can put it like that. I'm a Catholic, but Catholics can't hold a candle to Anglican choral tradition. And at the core of its beauty is the fact that it's all-male, men and boys, and together they produce a unique sound, and it's a sound, most critics would say, of matchless beauty. But for the, you know, for the last few years, woke bishops and woke deans have been vandalising this 900-year-old ceremony in the name of inclusion and equality. But, Rafe, I can hear people spitting feathers as you're saying all of this. We're living in a world of equality. What's wrong with you? Well, this is just it. This is the same thing as, as having anybody can be an artist these days and get exhibited in galleries. When you are, when you are diminishing quality in the, in the aspiration of equality, I think you've got a, 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 cure, and your critics a real would, problem And here. your critics will say, no, he's wrong, the quality is exactly as good as it was before. Well, <laughs> anyone with an ear can listen and, and find the difference for themselves. I think there's no finer sound than the sound of an all-male choir at Evensong, for example, and it's just such a tragedy that we're diminishing that. We had 11 such choirs in 2018. Now we only have two left, Westminster Abbey and King's College, Cambridge. St George's just went woke this year. And it's just a, I think it's a tragedy to see. Well, I have to say, Rafe, this is the only <laughs> broadcast channel in this country that would get somebody on to give that opinion, but I'm pleased that you have. I have to say, I sort of half noticed it, but I just assumed perhaps we've been doing this now for a few years, but this was the first time you said that that had actually happened. At St George's Chapel, Windsor. First time in 670 years. <laughs> How's the King doing? Well, I think the King has done actually a very good job in, in this Christmas period in actually setting out his stall as sovereign. That's really what this Christmas speech is all about. You have to take this speech and his accession speech together because we're still in that period of transition between accession and coronation. This is all about cementing his role, putting his own modern stamp on the monarchy, renewing his bond with, with the people. And so I, I think, you know, if his, if, his, uh, if his mother was Elizabeth the Great, I really get the sense from these last two speeches he wants to be seen as Charles the Compassionate, somebody really concerned about the welfare of the peoples in his kingdom. That's why that speech to me, you know, was full of kindness and empathy, um, humility and comfort also. Uh, and I think that's something which, you know, uh, I suppose is very much the, the spirit I of mean, Christmas. I thought, the, I thought the, the fact that it's a Christian festival that he celebrated that, but he said that, you know, all religions celebrate the triumph of light over darkness. I thought he got that right. I mean, he is actually playing the role of defender of the faith, isn't he? Well, it's very tricky, yes. I mean, he wanted to really reaffirm that fact, that he, he understands, because of his critics criticising this point, that he is supreme governor of the Church of England and is self-consciously a Christian monarch. But yes, the more delicate part was actually trying to show that you can be simultaneously defender of the faith and mm. defender of faiths. And, you know, and the monarchy has always been like that. So, you know, because we wouldn't have had an empire had we not been tolerant of other faiths. And from Victoria onwards, the Queen Emperor or the King Emperor ruled an empire where, where most people weren't Christian. They were Hindu and Muslim. Yeah. Now yeah. the empire has come home to roost and the King understands, much like King Edward VII, who famously said, you know, he had many Jewish friends and was very pro-Catholic. He said, I am a king of all peoples. And I think the King has that too. But the important thing, the delicate thing here is ensuring that you respect other faiths, but you really affirm the primacy of the Christian faith well, in Britain I, and of the established yeah. church in England and Scotland too. Which I thought he did, actually. I mean, we had some criticism last night from David Starkey over his peon of praise for the public sector, particularly as some of them are actually going on strike, <laughs> including the Royal College of Nursing, but we'll pass over that for now. Um, Rafe, you've worked in the past as, as a government advisor. Uh, we're about to go into 2023. Uh, I see so few political differences now between the front benches of the Conservatives and the Labour Party. Shocking figures 
uh, you know, the homework's been done. It's in the House of Commons Library, some well-established think tanks, the Resolution Foundation, etc. I mean, amazing, isn't it? That if you're a single parent with a couple of kids on 50,000 a year, if over the next decade your pay increases to 60,000 a year, you'll be 800 pounds better off. People pay marginal tax rates. That's the way. That's not on all your income, folks, but being the t last bit of it. Marginal tax rates up into the 90 per cent. What the hell are they thinking? Or and, aren't they? And, and combine that with the dramatic decline in wages since 2008 in this country, comparable to the rest of the G7, it's an absolute tragedy. And you have to actually despair and think, what is the Conservative Party all about? You know, the highest tax rates since the Second World War. And... The, the government has failed on defence. We have one of the smallest armies. The government has failed on immigration. The government has failed in reversing the long march through the institutions, failed on the BBC, failed to reform the civil service, failed to change our schools teaching critical race theory and gender theory. The one thing you thought you could rely on <laughs> was sound economic management and low tax rates. Well, we know what they've done to the economy with quantitative easing, fueling inflation. But yes, here we go on, on the tax rate system. And the Labour Party have an <coughs> o a open goal here. It's, it's not actually a, an antithetical for a progressive party to have low tax rates. JFK's Democrats in the 60s were opposed by the Republicans for their tax cuts. Of course, Blair and Brown, we've known marginally low tax rates compared... To yeah, and yesterday, Wes Streeting was out and about, you know, shadow cabinet minister saying we will not increase taxes for the middle classes. Now, I think they'll go for non-doms and high earners, and that's a separate debate for another day. But yeah, I mean, the Labour Party economically now outflanking the Tories on the right. Yeah, I think the, the problem with the Tories is they've seen some polling which shows that only 6% of the nation want to go for tr a trustonomics type of hard cutting. And they want to appeal to the red wall, so they think that they need to have higher tax rates. But actually, that's just an assumption. No one's actually done the real graph work to see the people in the red wall are actually strivers who want to get ahead in life. And yes. they're, they're not just people looking for <coughs> benefits and handouts and levelling up only. No, I couldn't agree more. And, and finally, Rafe, I've been criticised in The Times and elsewhere for Never. using the phrase... Well, not, <laughs> I'm fairly used to it, obviously. For using the phrase broken Britain, but that's how it feels to me. I think this entire country is, is broken now. It's in a, it's in a terribly d desperate state. And you just have to think, it needs actually the death of the Conservative Party to have the revival of conservatism in this country. Interesting Because thought. there's no hope here otherwise. Rafe, Hadel Manku, as ever, thank you for coming on and giving us your very unique perspective.